uh, I'm told that we're going to have an opportunity now to talk to um, somebody who knows what it's like to be a basketball player in Jamaica. He actually was a standout in the Big East for Seton Hall. And uh, I think Romaro Grill is, uh, Romaro Gill, excuse me, is with us. Uh, Romaro, are you there? Yeah, you can hear me? There yeah. you are. Yes, sir. Sorry I'm Brian Wheeler. That's Jason, that's Jason Puckett. And uh, and and welcome to the welcome to our, our our extravaganza here. What do you think about the thought of bringing Olympic basketball, well, making basketball to the Olympics? What do you think about that? Uh, can you repeat that again, please? I'm what do you think about What do you think about the possibility? And we believe it's going to happen in 2024 of uh, Jamaican basketball going to the Summer Olympics. Well, I think it's Winter a great Olympics. movement. You know, it's a great movement, and um, I think. I also think it's possible, and with all these guys like coming together, I think like we have a strong chance to make like a big push for whatever challenge that um, that we may face. So I think it's a good thing, and um, I'm just here to see how we move forward. <clears throat> Ramar, what what is what, what's basketball like there in terms of the popularity of the sport in the country here in America? No, uh, no. I mean, just but in Jamaica, like, what, what's how is it? How popular is it there? Oh, so, so I left Jamaica in 2015, and before that, I played basketball for like two years. And where I grew up in Jamaica was like country, like the country part of Jamaica, St. Thomas. So, like, where I'm from, like, bas basketball wasn't really like popular. Like, it was like soccer and stuff up there, but um. I mean, for me growing up playing basketball, it was it was nothing comparing to basketball over here in the United States because, like, first of all, like it was like the courts and everything were all outside, were like asphalt courts and um bad rims and all that. And um, even though like teams that were like in the in the city, like Kingston and those, like they had like better like facilities and whatnot, but. I mean, go up, in, go up in Jamaica playing basketball and to, like, make it out, like, I think for me, like, making it out of Jamaica, like, I think you can make it out of anywhere because I feel like that's, like, the one of the toughest, like, start in playing basketball, like, just growing up in Jamaica playing. For those who don't know, uh, Ramar last year for Seton Hall uh, was a Big East Defensive Player of the Year, was also the most improved player in uh, the Big East. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, at 7'3", you've got a, a pro career in front of you. But you came into basketball very late. Uh, I mean, as you say, you only played a couple of years when you grew up in Jamaica. You were really a, a cricket player, a volleyball player, a soccer player. How did you how did you get into basketball? And obviously, you took to it very well. Well, so I always, like, dreamt of, like, playing basketball when I was in Jamaica, like, before I started playing it. But at my, my high school at the time, they didn't have the sport like they used to have it, but I think the program got cut. And um, it was like my fifth year in high school. That's when they like finally like brought the sports back to to the school. And um, our first time like being introduced to the sport like it was a week before we have like our first game of like the ISA basketball um conference and our first game like. I think we had like two practice prior to our first game. Like none of us like knew nothing about basketball. We could barely like dribble, barely catch a ball. Like we didn't know nothing, like no coordination or nothing like that. And like, I think the first game we played was, I think it was against this school in the city called Idell. And these guys came and they like, came up here and like demolished us. Like, I think the score was like 70 something to like, probably six or something like that. And like, it was, it was bad. Like none of us knew how to play basketball at the time, but um, it was a good experience. Like I learned a lot from it. Um, My second year, I was granted the opportunity to like attend the high school, like in the city to get like more experience and be around more experienced guys. So like I grew from there and I had like a lot of like good people around me that pushed me every day and tell me like, you have a great chance in like making it big. So like I'll listen to him and I'm here now. When, when did you, when did you see or your, your first uh, recollection of, of basketball? Like who was it early on that, 
maybe on TV or kind of a, a guy that you watched or a team that you watched that kind of got you hooked on the sport? So honestly, it was a guy, the guy that first like ever I ever see like play basketball. He passed away last year, but it was um his name is Lenroy Wiggins, and he was like my first high school coach. Um, so I think he he originally is from like New York and he used to play basketball there, but he came to Jamaica. I think he got got into some trouble or whatnot, and he was just he came back to Jamaica and. He always like play basketball like on the weekends and whatnot, and I'm like, I'm almost the same height as that guy, so I feel like this sports is something for me, and I would like just go with him and play basketball, like work out with him and stuff like that, and from there he like just always like pushes me and like you can make your family like get them out of poverty and whatnot, and then I like okay, that's a good thing for me. And that, if I can help my family, like, I'm going to take this thing up and I start playing basketball. And um, my first year wasn't so great, but my second year, like, I went to, like, Star Search. And um, they have, like, this basketball, like, summer camp. I went there and I met, I met like, Minto and um, Mr. Watson and those guys, and they, like, brought me into the city to play basketball. Did you know much about the NBA before you uh... – <laughs> came to the States and once you did start finding out about the NBA, uh, what did you think about that level of basketball? Obviously the highest level of basketball. And was there any player that you kind of uh, immediately became a big fan of? I mean, you know, like just growing up in Jamaica, like you always hear about like the big guys in NBA, like Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal and guys like those and our very own Patrick Ewing. Like those are the people that, those are the guys that people really talked about. And, like, just growing up poor and whatnot, like, I didn't really have the opportunity to, like, watch basketball, NBA basketball games or none of that. So I originally started watching NBA basketball when I got to the States. But um, just, just, like, the transition, like, coming over here and, like, comparing basketball, like, in Jamaica to basketball over here, like, I got like a different like mindset towards it because like in Jamaica like when I used to do stuff I was like oh this is hard and then when I came over here I'm like oh that wasn't nothing that I was doing back there like whatever what we doing over here and I was like a thousand times harder than whatever we doing in Jamaica so I mean what um when when you when you watch the game what what surprised you I guess about the game the most in terms of when you played in Jamaica, when you came to the States, what was the biggest difference in, in terms of playing? Um, just like the physicality and just, I mean, I came from Jamaica. I was like 133 pounds. No, 100 and something. I was like skinny, super skinny. When I came over here, I saw these I was like in the third grade. I was third grade. I was about the same size. <laughs> oh, man. See? And I came over here and saw these guys like, big, muscular, strong, and I'm like, oh, man, like, I need to, like, put on some weight if I'm going to go against these guys because I didn't, like, I didn't know people could weigh, like, 200 and 250 pounds because, like, I was, like, I thought my weight was good, you know, but, like, that was one of the th one of the main thing, like, um, the physicality and, like, how hard they play and, like, like, just from practicing, like, three hours, sometimes four hours, like, stuff like that, like the running and everything. And um, just kind of like the climate, the climate change too, like, you know, playing like on a hot court in boiling sun in Jamaica to like coming over here and playing like in AC and all that stuff. Like that was kind of one of the things that kind of um, was like hard for me to like transition to because like the hair for me was somehow just dry. And sometimes I run out like easily get like fatigue and stuff like that. So like those are two some of like the main like challenges or stuff that I face. So obviously at seven foot three, you've got great size to move on to the next level. And clearly you had a great career at, at Seton Hall. Uh, what are our NBA? Are you talking to NBA people? Are they giving you any idea of what your future could be moving on to the next level and, and playing pro ball in, in the league? So, um, 
after the season, I was able to sign with an agent, and um, I I had um 12 NBA interviews, um, with 12 NBA teams, and um, they basically all the same, like they just like want to like get to know like your background and um, actually like a lot of like personal questions and stuff like that. Like they're not really like doing um like you know it's COVID and whatnot. They're not doing like workouts or stuff like that. That's what they told me. Like they're not doing workouts and stuff like that. So like they basing everything off like films that they see. So I was fortunately lucky to have like a great season last season. So like that gonna help me a lot. But like right now it's basically just a waiting game till November 18 to like see what my chances are, like, if I get drafted or get picked up by a team. So, like, I'm just here right now, just, like, working out, staying in shape and getting ready for the moment, you know. I got, I got one I, I got one question, all right? It's not basketball-related. Now, right. I, Lamar, I love food. Yeah. I love, I love food more than anything, okay, more than my children. Huh. Okay. Now, what's a signature Jamaican dish? If I'm going to sit down at a Jamaican restaurant or I'm coming to your – I'm coming to your house, your 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 parents' house, your grandparents' house. What's the signature j- uh, dish they're making? Uh, yo, there's a lot to choose from. Oh, you gotta go have one. All right. So, I would say if he comes to Jamaica, like you definitely have to have jerk chicken with like festival or something like that. Like that would be one thing that I'll let you try first. Like, if you don't like that, uh, I don't know, probably something wrong, but you can have to love that. So. I think I'll be okay. Yeah. I feel good. I was going to say, your chicken, I don't know that many Jamaican dishes, but that's that's what I've had. And it I mean, there's a lot. Good. There's a lot. It's very, very good. That's, that's a good standby uh, mm-hmm. if, if you can't, if you don't want to try, you know, to venture into something new. Romaro, thanks so much for uh, for being with us, and uh, best of luck. Sounds like you've got a great uh, future ahead in uh, pro basketball, and uh, and, uh, and hopefully you'll be representing your country, and hopefully your country's going to have Olympic basketball and uh, be able to point to players like you as uh, guys that have made that possible and kind of paving the way for the next generation of uh, Jamaican basketball players. But thanks for being with us as part of our big extravaganza tonight. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, Gil. Yeah, uh, remember that name, Puck. I think he's going to be somebody that we might hear on draft day.